here we are on resurrection morning, remembering all what Jesus has done for us, all what he went through, everything that our Lord went through for us. We didn't even deserve it, church. We didn't deserve it. But he loved us. We didn't even know him. He knew us. He already knew us. Whew. And he did these things for us. He blessed us. Glory, hallelujah. He took care of us. He said, no matter what we do, he's going to take care of us. No ma- the sins that we make, he said, I got you covered. Because he knew we couldn't get there without him. See, there's a lot of people in the world today, oh, well, I believe in God. I'm a good person. I'm going to get to heaven. Mm-mm. There's only one way to heaven. And that's through Jesus. You know, I just want to start out here this morning and where sometimes, you know, we take Jesus for granted. We really do. We take him for granted because he's so good to us. Come on now. He's so good to us. And we say, Lord, I, I, I love you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. No, he won't leave us. He won't forsake us. But all the time, we end up leaving him. Even the most ardent followers of Jesus. That's why I want to just start with, with, with Peter. Peter was Jesus' main man. Peter always spoke up. He is that guy. He wasn't going to let nothing go by. But you know what happened? Let's let's read this a little bit here, what Peter did. I'm going to start in Mark 14, 26. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. And Jesus said unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written... I will smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. But after I am risen, I will go before ye into Galilee. But Peter said unto him, although all shall be offended, yet will not I? And Jesus said unto him, verily, I say unto thee that this day. He didn't say in a few weeks. He said this day, even in this night before the cock crow twice thou shalt deny me thrice but he spake the more vehemently if I should die with thee I will not deny thee in any wise likewise also said they all Jesus told Peter you're going to deny me no Lord I, I, I would never deny you Lord I'm right here beside you all the time, Lord. I'm not going to let nobody come in between me and you, Lord. But it came to pass. Jesus told him. Before that night was over, Peter, one of Jesus' main men, was going to deny. He's going to deny. Woo, three times. Before, the, the, before that rooster, before that cock crowed t- twice. Come on now. Whew. Church, as good as Peter was, he slipped up one time with Jesus. That's why we always have to make sure that we're always watching ourselves. That we don't slip up. That we're always standing with Jesus. That we're always obeying his holy word. I don't want anybody to be here like Peter. Because when they came and arrested Jesus. And then they start looking for all his disciples. 
They said, hey, that's one of them right there. Uh Uh-huh. I ain't with them people. I ain't with him. That's what Peter said. A little while longer. Wait a minute. I think that's one of them right there. No, man. I said I ain't with him. He denied him. He denied him. That's one of them right there. I said I wasn't with Jesus. He denied him. No, man, leave me alone. And then it hit him. He heard that cock crow. He said, oh, my goodness, what did I just do? His mind wasn't steady on Jesus. His mind was steady on himself. Church, I'm telling you right now, it's easy to slip up. That's why we have to stay in his word. See, Jesus, he got on that cross. They put him on there. They put him on the cross for what? For nothing. For telling the truth. They put him on the cross because the powers to be, they didn't like Jesus because he was taking their worldly power away from them. He is trying to get them straight again, back with God. See, power it corrupts you because once you got it, you don't want to let it go. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all them, the rabbis, whatever, they had their little power back then. They didn't want to let it go. And here come Jesus preaching and teaching something. And as like, no, 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 no. Who is this man? He's, he's not learned. We did not teach him. He did not come through us in his learning. Where did he get this knowledge from? Who is this man? We got to get rid of him. Pontius Pilate. Come on now, help us out. How about you said Barabbas go and we'll give you Jesus. You can kill Jesus. To keep their power. Whew. Church, we got to be careful. We got to make sure we stand in God's word. Jesus, he didn't get up there trying to hit him and punch him and fight him and, and run at that point because he knew what he had to do. He knew what his job was. He knew what his mission was. He knew what his life was there for. His life, he freely gave for our lives. He could have come down from the cross, but he decided to stay. He decided not to come down. He decided not to call upon thousands of thousands of angels to come down and get him. He decided to stay to save me. He decided to stay on that cross to save you. I know a lot of people, but I'm here to tell you. Of all the people you know, people I know, they going to give their life for you? Only Jesus could have done what he did. Only Jesus, his blood, his blood, perfect blood of an unblemished lamb. Only he could have done that. He didn't come down. He stayed upon that cross for a sinner like me. And there's nothing I've ever done to deserve it. He did it because he loved me. He did it because he loves each and every one of you. 
And I'm here to tell everybody this morning, it's not too late. The blood is sufficient for everyone. The blood is sufficient for everyone. All you have to do is turn over your heart and mind unto Jesus. Just like that thief upon the cross. He probably be deserved to be there according to their laws. But Jesus told him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Because Jesus knew his heart. See, there's a lot of people that say, oh, I love Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus. And it's lip service. It's lip service. See, you can make it sound real good. You know, there's a lot of good people out here in the world that are good orators. They can talk. They can give a speech like no one else can give a speech. But that don't work with God. That does not work with Jesus because they know our hearts. They know our hearts. So I don't care what kind of con man or woman you are. You can't con God. He knows exactly what's on your heart. He knows exactly what's on your mind. Be sincere when you go to Jesus. Be sincere in your prayers. A lot of times we say, I prayed, I prayed, and I prayed. And I didn't see my prayers answered. Were you praying amiss? Were you praying with a sincere heart? You know, God told us, ask and you shall receive. You know, sometimes we ask things of God that we don't need. We ask things of God that is not good for us. And you know what he does? He'll withhold that from you because he loves you. Remember growing up, you wanted something from your parents and they would tell you, oh, no, you can't have that. Because they knew it wasn't no good for you. They knew you weren't mature enough for it. They knew you couldn't handle it. Same way with God. We're his children. There's just some things we can't handle. There's just some things we're just not mature enough to handle. And he'll withhold that from you. Not because he's trying to keep things from you. He's trying to protect you. Because he loves you. Because you are his children. Whew. Woo. God gave his only begotten son up for us. My, my, my. Woo. We didn't deserve it. Come on now, church. We're just none but filthy sinners. But made clean. By the blood of Jesus. We have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen, church. Glory, hallelujah. Church, I'm here to tell you this morning. We serve a good God. We serve a good God. Great God Almighty. Pastor Linda got that from Pastor Hart. Because we do serve a great God. Whew. A great God, church. Come on now. Amen. So when you're talking with your friends, tell them about Jesus. Say, he doesn't care what you've done. He's more concerned about what you're going to do. See, we as people, we always bring up our mess from the past. God throws that in the sea of forgetfulness. That's what the blood of Jesus was for. To cover all of our sins. All of our sins. Woo. You know how good it feels if you've been outside, maybe working in your yard all day long. Then you go in the house and you get in that shower and the dirt just starts to fall off you. And your skin feels better. You feel better. I'm telling you, that's what the blood of Jesus does. You will feel better. This world is just trying to weigh you down. This world is just trying to get you all dirty. 
get your mind all confused. So you think right is wrong and wrong is right. So you think up is down and down is up. So you think left is right and right is left. That's what he wants. He wants to confuse you. That's why you have to be covered in the blood. That's why you have to be covered in the blood, church. Me and my, my son, Brother Richard, we're just going to tag team up this a little bit this morning. and I'm going to let him finish the service up as I started it. So I'm going to let him take over from here. Amen, church? Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> You know, it's very important that we celebrate this special time, amen? Yes, yes. My father was illustrating very well, amen, amen, that our Lord and Savior, our personal Savior, Jesus Christ, has paid the price that he did so that we can be redeemed from our sins, amen? And it's so true that, this wor- that the world wants to turn everything backwards, amen, which is why it's important we stay close to Christ. Amen. Everything the God says is true, the world wants to reverse and say that's not good, it's bad. And what the Bible tries to say and establish is bad, the world tries to promote and say, no, it's good. Amen. Now, I'm not going to get too political here, <laughs> but uh, the, if you look recently, something happened um, with Joe Biden. Um, making a proclamation that kind of goes against what the Christian belief is. So I don't know if anyone has seen it. Um, Yes, we know if you get into the history of Easter, it has some pagan ties of what some people, you know, how it started so forth. But we know how we Christians celebrate. We honor the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And you look at least nationwide. And people at least acknowledge that aspect. Well, there is now proclamation or declaration, rather, I should say, that it should be celebrated as a trans day, Easter. So you think this world isn't trying to combat God? It is. Everything that God tries to say is good, the Bible tries to say, no, that's hate crime. No, that's false. And what God said is good, the world tears down. What God says is bad, they say, no, this is good, this is love. I'm telling you, you cannot exist in this world as a Christian without having Satan or the devil combat you. And that's a sign that you're doing something right. (laughs) Amen. Because a dog don't chase the parked car. Neither does a devil chase the parked Christian, okay? (laughs) Amen. Amen. (laughs) But know that this day that your God is for you and not against you. Amen. And that all power that he has, he has placed in you. Why? Because of what he did on Calvary. Amen. Now, this is the great aspect because he paid that price for us so we can be relieved or have our sin, have the remission of our sins. Trying to get that out grammatically correct (laughs) so we can have remission for our sins. Amen. But he had such a full package. It wasn't just the cleansing of our sins that he provided. No, what he provided was power. Power to overcome every and any obstacle that is in our path. That we could call to not and it'll be not. That we can call so and it'll be so. This is the very power that we have in us because of our God. He is not dead. (laughs) Nor are we. Amen. He is alive and we are alive because he is alive in us. And he has risen that day with all power, conquering death, hell, and the grave, conquering our sins, and making us something new that we could not be ourselves. This is the price, and this is the action of what our God has accomplished. He said, no, Satan, you thought you had my people. Let me take that back (laughs) and put it in your hands. (laughs) Now be the church I want you to be. Amen. This is what our God has done for us. Amen. He has given us power to tread on the head of serpents. Amen. Power to conquer everything that the enemy tries to rise against. What is the word of truth? These actions that he's doing in our world, these things he's doing in our life. My God said, I have the power to call that thing to be under my feet. Amen. Do you hear me now? 
That means everything that's going in my life, not according to the word of God, I can call it down. Yes. Amen. It may not happen right when I want it. But best believe you better have discernment and spirit and know that it happened right that second. And you better hold on to that with all your life and don't let it go. Because this is a walk of faith we're walking now. It's not a walk of sight. It's a walk by faith. He has given us all power and he has given victor us victory, nothing less. If our God has loved us more enough to die for us and go to that cross for us, do you think he would leave any aspect of victory out of our hands? He said he would not withhold one good thing from those that live upright and diligently seek him. So do you live upright, saints? Do you seek him with all your heart? That doesn't mean you have to have it perfect. It means you have to want him honestly and sincerely. Yes. You, want to want, you have to want to get deeper in him. And when you have that, like a relationship, want to get to know him more, he said he would not withhold one good thing from you. That he will be for you and will be with you even till the ends of the earth. Right. Not any one thing will overcome you. Amen. We go through storms, yes. but the storm will end. The battle, you are not the defeated. You are the victor. Yes. Do you hear me? <laughs> Amen. We are victorious. We are more than conquerors. What does that mean, Pastor Linda? <laughs> we are overcomers. We're more than conquerors. What does that mean? <laughs> that means we don't have to fight the battle. Jesus has already fought the battle for us. We just step into victory. Are you hearing me now? <laughs> this is the assurance. This is the power. Due to the price that our Savior has paid for us. Now, last time I checked, if I go to a store and I give a cashier a receipt for something I pre-bought, that receipt is proof enough to say, hey, I'm owned this, owed this. This is mine. Amen. When we go into a battle, I hear me now. When we go into a situation that's against us. Hold on. Let me pull out that receipt. <laughs> Let me show you, devil. You see this here where it says, I have the victory. Amen. Amen. You need to rub it in the devil's face. <laughs> Stand up and know who your God is. Have belief in the faith and the power that he has placed inside of you this day to be the child that he wants you to be. Amen. Amen. Do you believe in the power now? Because <laughs> that's one aspect. Amen, Bubba's. <laughs> we have the forgiveness. Amen. We ha now know and understand the power our God has placed in us. Yes. Now we need to get to the why. Because <laughs> this, this holiday, Resurrection Day, isn't only just about being cleansed from our sins. It's not only about having a new power that's in us. Mm -hmm. Do we know what the reason for Jesus going to that cross was for? Mm -hmm. It was to close the gap. It was to have, for the first time, a personal or intimate relationship with our Father. Because, see, before this, we lived at a distance as a people. We had our temples, we had our altars, and we could go to the priest and say, pray on my behalf. And he would go into the presence of God. He would go into the Holy of Holies. Come on. Yes, if he was holy. Which had a complication. <laughs> but what did Jesus do? Well, as no one's back here, I'm going to go ahead and be the tech person I am here. Uh-oh, I guess we don't have scriptures. <laughs> it left me. Well, whoever, my, my phone is connected to the computer, but it got disconnected. So if you want to go back there, Padre. That's okay. <laughs> We're going to still have scripture reference here. <laughs> Amen. I could say it out loud if I want to, but I won't read it from the TV. Amen. Because even though we're not live stream, we're still recording. We're still going to upload this. And I want this to be seen. Amen. Amen. So, Father, you're in the book of Mark. Can we go to the book of Luke? And go to chapter 23. Let me make sure I still have the spot here. And I need you to go to verse 44 for me. And go ahead and get the second verse ready, or the following verse ready. So that's Luke chapter 23, verse 44. Now this is while he was on a cross. And it says, and it was about the sixth hour. And there was a darkness 
over all the earth until the ninth hour. This is after he went through the beating. This is after he went through, got the stripes. He's been put on the cross. And now he's about to give up the ghost. Amen. And the son, now, if you can go uh, load this up. And, uh, well, I guess we'll just leave it like this for now. I've read in a NET, but we'll keep it here. So verse 45 says, and the sun was darkened. Now, somebody tell me what this next part says. And the veil of the temple. Now, for those of you who don't know, this was the entrance to the presence of God. This was the entrance to the holy of holies where we were separated by what was known as a curtain or a veil. And it was the most holy, the high priest, he, where he would first get himself clean first to make sure he could enter because no one with sin could enter in or sin would be conquered in that moment and you would die if you had sin. You would have to talk to the high priest and he would go in for you and enter the presence of God. But what our Jesus did is he tore down that veil. I said, no, what I want is something more intimate. I want each and every one of you to be able to gather in my presence. I don't want this to be some kind of long-distance relationship because <laughs> that obviously don't work. <laughs> Amen. I want to be in you, and I want you to be in me. This is the whole purpose of what Easter is for. Amen. It's not to take it in part. As my father was saying, taking things for common, taking it for granted. It's not just to say forgiveness of sins and then live the rest of the year the same way you were. It's not to have him take the keys of death on the grave from the enemy, give them to you, and you to sit on it and not call things done. It's for you to be cleansed, to have cleansed, have forgiveness, have the power of the Holy Ghost in you, but also to have the intimacy of which those come through. That personal relationship with what is the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Wow. Now, if you want to get into it, that's where you can read of the day of Pentecost. But we're not going to read through those scriptures. We're just going to stay here. Amen. <laughs> but that is the day where we received as God's people the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Wow. And people were clothed with cloven tons of fire. Amen. Where they were clothed and endued with power. Power to speak to the mountain to move, and it would move. Amen. Power to lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Amen. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave is the same power it, that's in us. With the given instruction from Jesus himself that the same things that you've seen me do, the same and greater will you do in my name. That comes from intimacy. <laughs> Amen. Do you hear me? So we have this power. But what Jesus wants, the reason he did this is because the entire time he was on that cross, the entire time he was going through all of this, what did he do? What did he have on his mind? You and I. Amen. Amen. Now, most of us would probably not be thinking of someone else if we're going through pain. <laughs> Amen. Especially given that scenario. Where the same people you're supposedly trying to die for, trying to save, are turning against you. But he didn't care. In our sin, he still loved us. And in that, he said, I'm going to pay this price. Because what I offer you, you have no idea. You do not understand it yet. But it's going to be so much for your good. And I want this for you. Whether you receive it or not, it's your choice. But this is here for you. It's for your good. And I'm laying the groundwork and the foundation for you to step into being what is my child, my sons and my daughters. Amen. Do we receive what the Lord Christ Jesus has done for us? Amen. <laughs> because it was an awesome price that he paid. Amen. It was an awesome thing that he did that day. And no, yeah, even that day. The devil did not want. He was defeated. <laughs> Amen. May I say that again? The devil was defeated. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But, and this, these scriptures don't 
explain the whole thing. It just covers the veil. You look at the there's the other the f- other three gospels. They lay it out differently. The veil was torn and the temple was destroyed. Amen. It did away with the systematic. Amen. Don't be legalistic with God. Amen. Be sincere. And as I said, seek him with an honest heart. Amen. This is what our God wants. Amen. He wants intimacy. He wants closeness. Amen. He wants to know you as if he is your best friend. And can I tell you something? God being your best friend is the greatest thing you can ever have. (laughs) Amen. He is always there for you, and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And even when you see no way out, even when you have no deeper you can dig in yourself, he's always there talking in your ear saying, keep going, son. I am here with you. You still have power in me. Amen. And he gives us that assurance. Amen. He gives us that victory that we need. Amen. Because victory comes here first. Amen. It's a spiritual matter. Amen. And when we have that closeness with him, that's where we can find that comfort. We find it in him. Amen. We call Jesus the Prince of Peace. All peace, true peace, comes from him. Amen. So the closer you are to him, the more of that peace you will find. That's why we needed to get into his presence. It wasn't enough to stay at a distance and say, God, I'll serve you from beyond the veil. That doesn't work too well. Because what you'll find is you'll serve God to an extent, but you'll also serve other things. God won't, in other words, be first in your life. You will have extents or limits to which you seek. But as we have a personal relationship with our Christ, amen, as he is our husband and we are his bride, if you have a husband and a wife, amen, that do not go to the ends of the earth for each other, (laughs) that don't view each other as the most important people on this earth, and they cut their dedication to him in half and say as much attention as I give to you I'm a gift to someone else and I'm a gift to here it's not a very healthy relationship is it it's not healthy for them and it's not healthy for you amen in the same manner serving or living a half serving life to Christ is not going to be beneficial for you amen now if you want the real scripture God himself says, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. (laughs) Amen. Because you are hard to work with. You believe that God's word is, but usually it comes down to whether or not it gets you out your comfort zone or not. And it's usually there where you draw the line and say, well, God, I don't want to be uncomfortable. So, but that's not laying yourself down to serve. Now, I'll also say this, as I have laid myself down to serve, (laughs) I'll get into some testimony time here. Yeah, it may have been something, I mean, we've all been there, right, Pastor Linda, we've all been there, having that initial decision to lay down who we are for our desire's sake, to give ourselves to Christ to say, Christ, you make of me what you want me to be. Can I tell you, that was the greatest decision I've ever made. (laughs) And I could go into a full rant, but I don't think we have time for that in this sermon to give my whole testimony on that. But it is the greatest decision you will make. Amen. The Bible says those who try to save their life will lose it. But those who give their lives for Christ will find it. It's only truly when you lay down and give your life to Christ and say, Christ, I am what or who you make me to be. Make me who you call me to be. Change me and transform me into who you want me to be, and I will be yours. It is only then when you truly find what is the purpose of life and what you find, really find what is the true fulfillment of life because it's then that you're made whole. It's through Christ, amen. And that comes from the tearing of the veil and getting into what is the holy of holies, 
getting into the holy presence of God and getting personal with the creator of the heavens and the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I don't want to go too much longer. Amen. <laughs> I believe we both covered enough, even if it's not a typical length sermon. Two preachers can be a lot to digest. <laughs> Amen. But I want to stress that importance. Amen. Get personal. Amen. Yes. Which is why, as offering that, amen, if there's anyone here who wishes to dedicate themselves to Christ, either for a first time or they, you just simply want to renew your vows and say, Lord Jesus, I've not been living up to you as much as I should have been, and I want to rededicate myself to you. Now is the time. Amen. amen. This is what our Jesus paid the price for. He said, come. And I will receive you as you are. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are there any that would want to come and dedicate their life to Christ or rededicate? Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. We offer the altar to you right now. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the harvest, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. For the price you paid. We thank you for salvation, Lord Jesus, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank you for it, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Heavenly Father. <clears throat> hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Well, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm not going to hold it open forever. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes. So how about this? Let's just pray where we are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's just stand and just pray where we are. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, Lord. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge this day for you, Lord Jesus. Despite what the world says, we acknowledge this day for you. We give you this day, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. We remember the price that you paid for us, Lord Jesus. We love you for the price you paid, and we honor you and praise you for the price you paid, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, right now, I want you to search me, and I would just, if you want to say this to yourselves, make it personal, make it intimate. I'm just going to pray for myself. If you want to, just reiterate it to God yourself from your own perspective. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, right now, I give myself to you. I am your servant, Lord Jesus, and you are my God. I give you all that I am, Lord Jesus, and I want you to mold me how you want me to be, Lord Jesus. I lay myself down completely in humbleness, Lord Jesus, so that you can show me what real life truly is, Lord Jesus. Give me your fullness, Lord Jesus, because I seek deeper in you, Lord Jesus. Show me the mysteries that you have for me, Lord Jesus. Show me the power of your Holy Spirit. Show me the intimacy of your relationship on a new level that I've never seen before, Lord Jesus. I want to know you more. I want to know you deeper than I ever have, Lord Jesus. And I give you me this day, Lord Jesus, Lord, so that you can make me who you want me to be, Lord Jesus, Lord. I honor you and I praise you for it, Lord Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just praise him, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, as we offer ourselves to you, Lord Jesus. Make us who you want us to be, Lord Jesus, Lord. Close that gap and show us what real relationship we can have with you, Lord Jesus, this very day, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord, for the thought you put in us, Lord Jesus, Lord, the thought of our lives. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that you would die for me, Lord Jesus, and cleanse me up and work with me, Lord Jesus, Lord. I thank you for all you've done for me. I thank you for the price, Lord Jesus, and I just give you all the glory, honor, and praise, for you are worthy, and you are deserving of it, Lord Jesus. In your holy and mighty name, we praise you, Lord Jesus, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we thank you for coming out this morning. Amen. Amen. This Easter Sunday. Amen. Or as we call it, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. 
Amen. Just remember to take this with you. Amen. Remember that Christ is for you and not against you. Amen. And the more that you seek him, the more he will reveal himself to you. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Amen. We'll be back here next Sunday. Amen. 1045 for morning service. And we'll also have Bible study. Amen. Seven o'clock on Wednesday. Amen. So we love you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to our stream. However, this brings a conclusion to our service. We would like to invite everyone to help us out by making any donations as you please, as they do help us to continue our ministry. If you would like to send a gift online, donations can be made using the donate button at our website, faithtemplebg.org. Or, if you would prefer to send something in the mail, all checks or money orders can be written to Faith Temple and can be mailed to the address 175 State Street in Bowling Green, Ohio, zip code 43402. We really do appreciate any and all gifts sent in. We thank you for tuning in to our stream, and we hope to catch you on the next one. We love you, and God bless.